Hello everyone. This video we're going to talk about what's a fiber optic PoE switch. So in order to understand that, we're going to have to refresh our memory on PoE technology first. A PoE technology is a method of transmitting both power and data through a finger Ethernet cable. With this technology, we can make our network set very convenient. All we need is one device to provide the power and data for the whole network system, and that device goes to the alternating current. Then from that on, everything, every device we need to connect, all we need to use is Ethernet cables. So this would make the whole process, it would cost less and it would be more effective, the productivity will enhance. Most of all, it would be very safe because we're working with a safe voltage. Now the POE technology has its benefits, but also has a very deadly disadvantage. It can only go 100 meters, the PoE signal. After 100 meters, the signal will drop very... After 100 meters, the signal will drop heavily and then we will not be receiving enough power or the signal we were losing at our edge device. So if we want to reach longer distance than 100 meters, we usually would use extension devices such as a PoE extender or a PoE powered switch. But even with these devices, our whole Ethernet cable transmission is limited up to 800 meters. After 800 meters, any other method will be useless. So then, we now have come up with other kinds of transmission mediums for us to transmit the data. Now, fiber optic link is a very advanced technology to transmit our data. It is using either from digital, digital signal to an optical signal. So once it trans transmits forms from a digital signal to optical signal, the speed can go all the way up to 10 and 20 gigabits per second, and the distance will be up to 20 or 30 kilometers. The reason is because it's an optical signal, it transmits like at the speed of light, and our fiber optic cable is also an important, important part of it. The fiber optic cable is the reason why it can transmit that fast. It's like a lot of surface mirror surfaces within and it will bounce the lasers directly for forwards. So a fiber optic link is usually applied in those areas where we need long distance and high speed transmission. Talking about the fiber optic link, we will need to know what devices and components it's made up of. A fiber optic link, we usually have five, five pieces involved. So the fiber optic cable, of course, is a very important part because it's a special designed cable with two connectors, which will help us be the transmi transmission medium for our data. Then it's a two, a two pairs of devices. The first pair are these very small modules. These are called an SFP module, which stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable. They, we use them as a transceiver, so they transmit or receives the fiber optic signal. The fiber optic link, you can see these as the guns which shoot out the lasers and a net that receives and captures the lasers on the other end. They usually come in different wavelengths so they don't corrupt during the transmission and we need one of these on each end of our fiber optic cable. And then here comes our other important component. So these little boxes are called a media converter. The media converter is, re is used for converting the signals mutually from digital to optical. Because our Ethernet cable, our network, our network setup is based on digital signals. And once we want to use it as transmit as a fiber optic signal, we will need to we will need to convert it to optical signal at first. Then it can be launched from the receiver or the, the transceiver then to our other end. So this box is a very important part as well. It, it has, you can see it has Ethernet ports and an SFP module port. So the SFP module goes here, Ethernet go here. This and the whole conver converting process is done within. So we need one of these on each end as well. They come in various models with different bandwidth and different numbers of ports for us to connect to different numbers of devices. And for the convenience, the, the purpose of making our lives easier, 
some of these media converters are integrated in PoE switches because since we're going to use this as just a converting device, it can it doesn't really have to be an individual device. We can integrate it inside our whole PoE switch. So that's our thing we're going to discover today, our fiber optic PoE switch. So after knowing about fiber optic link, let's take a look at our fiber optic switch. The fiber optic switch is basically a PoE switch used for providing PoE signals, data exchange, and uploading data to recorders over the internet. It's more a PoE switch integrated with a media converter. So in this case, we can use this PoE switch to connect the fiber optic link for us to transmit data faster and further. Or just imagine we have an IP device we want to use far, far away, over 800 meters. We can use fiber optic link to connect to that device itself, but we're going to have to solve the power supply on the other end because fiber optic link is only a transmission for data. So we, Fast Cabling, have a very lots of PoE switch with fiber optic integrated. So let's take a look at our fiber optic PoE switches. Let's talk about the most basic one, a 95 watts high power PoE switch. Its main purpose is for high power. It can provide up to 90 watts of power output from these four ports and the other go with 30 watts. It has an indicator on the side for us to monitor the power and data output. The special part is it has a fiber optic link. So imagine if you need to use this as a gathering device first, then you upload it to your network recorder or the internet. You can use a fiber optic link for the fast transmission. And the POE switch, of course, it has power supply built in and it has power surge protection. So it's a very basic one for us to gather fiber optic fiber optic link to a PoE switch. And then uh, remember this usually comes with another, another piece of media converter because there's only one media converter here and the other media converter would usually go to the other end right before our data reaches our uh, IP device. So after talking about the basic PoE switch, let's talk about something a little bit bigger. So this is a high power PoE switch as well has an LCD screen for us to manage and control it. We can control the timeline for uh, uh, several PoE ports. The Ethernet ports, we can control how much power they want to output or if we want to close it on a time frame. And it also has an upload uplink port and two SFP ports. So also available for fiber optic link. So high speed long distance transmission is okay for it as well. And this one is maximum at 60 watts of power output. So it's not as much as our big first one, but this has a little bit more feature of the LCD screen so we can easily manage it right in front of it. Then let's talk about a big guy here. This one here is a 16 port high power PoE switch. It has four fiber optic link ports for us. So you can imagine we can use connect to more fiber optic links networks for us. And to uplink ports, you can see it has 16 ethernet ports right here. So we have half of them, eight of them. The first eight are 90 watts maximum and the other eight are 30 watts maximum. So that power output is a lot. So we can use this for a main network app before we you know, set up multiple small sub networks. We can use this 16 port to add our main network in our control room. And you can see there are indicators right here so we can monitor these power outputs if they have, you know, sometimes a malfunction, not providing power or data, we'll get a quick look really immediately. And also power surge protection and power supply built in. So with these SFP ports, we can connect to, you know, uh, some to the IP devices far away, some to upload to our network. So these are more like indoor basic models. Now let's take a look at some special kinds. This is an industrial PoE switch with SFP ports. It doesn't really look that much different. 
from our regular PoE switches. The front panel, you can see everything is more totally black, so it seems more delicate. And the SFP ports right here also connect to our devices. It's not that much different. It's just it has a DIN rail, DIN rail rack right here, so we can just easily mount it on a DIN rail, and it will be really easy for us to exchange or replace one for our network once this one is damaged or malfunctioning. This other one is just the same kind, just with more ports, so these two are industrial hardened PoE switch. These are more used in like big factories or companies when they set up a very legit network system. They would have thin real racks for us to put these on and that would make them more convenient than these kinds because these kinds are more designed to just lay on the surface. So now I'm just going to show you guys how to connect a PoE IP camera with one of our PoE uh, switches using a fiber optic link. So first of all, let's take the out of our way. We're going to use a very basic 95 watts high power PoE switch. And we're going to use one media converter because we have one integrated in our PoE switch. The others are all required. First of all, we power up our PoE switch. Once that is done, now it's gonna, we have our power sourcing or data source ready. Now we're going to have to connect our fiber optic link. So first we get out our fiber optic cable, our SFP modules, and the second media converter. At our first media converter, which is our PoE switch, we're going to insert our SFP module here. Then we're going to insert our fiber optic cable. So this end would be done. Then way far away on the other end, we're going to use our second media converter. And these media converters, they're not PoE devices, so we need to use we need to use a power source for it as well. So once we get the power source for it. See the indicators are on, then we're going to insert our SFP module, then our fiber optic cable. So you can see that a thousand, this indicator is on, meaning the fiber optic cable, the fiber optic link is successfully set up. And all we need to do now is use an Ethernet cable and a power supply for our PTZ camera. So Ethernet cable first to our PTZ camera, and then connect. You will see our PTZ camera is now live. So now we will be receiving our image back back at our control room on our monitor. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the section below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.